tonight in what has become an election year tradition for 60 Minutes, conversations with the major party candidates for president and vice president of the United States. Later, Nora O'Donnell interviews former Vice President Joe Biden and his running mate, Senator Kamala Harris. But we begin with President Donald Trump and Vice President Mike Pence. I spoke with the president on Tuesday in the Roosevelt Room at the White House. The story will continue in a moment. We had prepared to talk about the many issues and questions facing the president. But in what has become an all-too-public dust-up, the conversation was cut short. It began politely, but ended, regrettably, contentiously. Are you ready for some tough questions? You're going to be fair. Are you go be, I'm going to be fair. Just be fair. But you're OK with some tough questions? No, I'm not. I mean, you're not I OK with tough I questions? I want them to be fair. You, you don't ask Biden tough questions. So. OK. Are you, you ready? ready? Everybody ready? So we have the pandemic. On your watch, we've had racial strife. We've had looting. Why do you want this job? Why do you want to be president again? Because we've done a great job, and it's not finished yet. And when I finish, this country will be in a position like it hasn't been maybe ever. Uh, the economy is already roaring back, and uh, other people aren't going to bring it back. Certainly, the person that we're dealing with is not going to bring it back. They're going to raise taxes. Let me ask you what you think your uh, the biggest domestic priority is for you right now. Uh, well, or next ultimately, year. Let, let me, and I, I'll tell you, it was happening. We created the greatest economy in the history of our country, and the other side. You was know that. In. You know that's not true. It is totally true. No. It isn't. But President Trump did have an impressive string of economic accomplishments. We had the best stock market price ever, and we're getting close to that price again. The unemployment numbers for African Americans, for Asian Americans, for Hispanic Americans, virtually every number was the best. And what was happening is things were coming well, together. Well, I asked you, what's the priority? I mean, those are all the you, good things. The what do you have to solve? The priority now is to get back to normal, get back to where we were, to have the economy rage and be great with jobs and everybody be happy. And that's where we're going, and that's where we're heading. And who is our biggest foreign adversary? I would say China. They're an adversary. They're, they're the a biggest. competitor. They're a foe in many ways, but they're an adversary. Uh, I think what happened was disgraceful. It should never have happened. Should, they should never have allowed this plague to get out of China and go throughout the world. 188 countries should never have happened. Four years ago, you were behind in the polls, as you are now, and you pulled it out. But this time, you have kind of a double migraine. You have unemployment claims going up. You have COVID cases going up. I mean, it's like the gods have suddenly decided, decided to conspire against you. I don't you. think so at all, no. I think well, we've what done a about great these... job with COVID. Sir, excuse me, cases are up in about 40 okay. states. You know why cases are up also? because we do more testing. The fake news media loves to say cases are up. The fact is we've done a very, very good job. Cases are up. We have done, that's right, because we're doing so much testing. There is increased testing, but according to the COVID tracking project, that doesn't account for all of the rise in new cases sweeping the country or the 40% increase in hospitalizations in the past month. When you're out there saying we've turned the corner, this thing is disappearing, That's and right. people can see people can see cases going up all over the in the Midwest, in the Mountain West. Record numbers of cases in some corner. states. We understand the disease. We understand the elderly, and we are taking care of them like nobody's ever taken care of them. So we are taking care of our people. Okay, let me let me ask you something about suburban women. Yeah. Suburban women, will you please like me? Remember? Please, please. I saved your damn neighborhood, okay? You said the other day to suburban women, will you please like me, please, oh, please? Oh, I didn't say that. You know, that's so misleading the way I say jokingly, suburban women, you should love me because I'm giving you security and I got rid of the worst regulation. See, the way you said that yeah. is why people think of you and everyone else as fake news. 
I said kiddingly, suburban women, women, you should love me. I got rid of a regulation you said, that would bring low-income housing into suburbia that is destroying, that would destroy suburbia. And I said that in a joking way. The way you have it, it's like, oh, like I'm begging. I, I'm kidding. Play it, and I'm kidding. That is such a misleading question, Leslie. But you're behind with suburban women in the polls. I doubt it. I doubt it. I really doubt it. One of the reasons is that they don't feel you're being upfront about the pandemic. Are you we're deliberately the downplaying we're it? We're doing well. We're doing well. We understand the disease. We've done a good job. We've done maybe a great job. What we haven't done a good job on is convincing people like you, because you're really quite impossible to convince, but that's okay. And the economy now is coming back, and it's coming back very strongly. And people see that, Leslie. There are more unemployment claims. I mean, the economy has kind of Leslie, stalled we just a picked bit. up 11.4 million jobs. It's the largest number in the history of our country. It but is true denying? that of the 22 million jobs lost since February, 11.4 million have been restored. Yet, unemployment claims are running at historically high levels. But the Last president sees the economy as his strongest suit. Gallup did a poll. 56% of the people said that they're better off now during a pandemic than they were during Obama and Biden. 56%. It was a record number. Can we go back for one second to the pandemic? Because um, you called Dr. Fauci and other health officials idiots. Where did I call them an idiot? You called them idiots. I wonder if well, you he's think... he's been wrong a lot. I like <laughs> I, him, but he's been I, wrong a I lot. I wonder if you think that masks don't work. I feel masks possibly work. But certainly you want to stay away a certain distance, socially distance, et cetera. But I would say a mask works, and I have nothing against masks, and I tell people to wear masks. I have well, no tell problem. me then about these rallies you've been having. A lot of people are wearing people, masks. A and lot of outside. people aren't. I'm, I'm watching all these people jammed in together, and I'm seeing so most of them without yeah. masks. And I'm wondering the message that you're sending with these pictures coming across television. Take a television. look. Yesterday, we were in Arizona, record setting rallies, numbers of people like nobody's seen before. You used to have bigger rallies. No, these are much bigger than I ever okay, had. I don't want to bicker over that. You know, Tell me you're, about you're so the mask negative. Wearing. You're so negative. These are the biggest rallies we've ever had. You just come in here with that negative attitude. These are the biggest rallies we've ever had. But I can't believe after what happened in the Rose Garden here, after the announcement, with all the people getting sick, yeah. that you are not being more strongly encouraging I, about wearing masks at your rallies. I tell people to wear masks. But you masks. don't. Leslie, we hand out thousands of masks. But you look out rally. and they're not wearing them. You don't get up there and say, look, you know, okay. come on. Go I don't ahead. want what's you your, to get sick. What's your next sick. question, Leslie? We're outside. The rallies are bigger than they've ever been. There's more enthusiasm than we've ever had. There has never been anything like what you're witnessing now, and you'll see that soon. Um, okay, I'll ask you another health question, okay? Go Told ahead. you, okay. Um, you promised that there was going to be a new health package, a health care plan. Yeah. Um, you said that it was going to be great. You said it's ready. It's going to it be ready. Be. It'll be here in two weeks. It's going to be like nothing you've ever seen before. And, of course, we haven't seen it. So why didn't you develop a health plan? It is developed. It is fully developed. It's going to be announced very when? soon. When we see what happens with Obamacare. If the Supreme Court ends this, Obamacare. Um, well, we're going to have to see what happens. I think, I, I hope that they end it. It'll be so good if they end it. And if they end it, people with pre-existing conditions will be stranded. No, no. And that's just a fact. It's wrong. It's no. wrong. A new plan will happen. But will. And we won't do anything will and is. We won't do anything and no plan unless we have pre-existing conditions covered. With little more than a week till the election, the president has been barnstorming the swing states where the polls are tight, including Florida, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, and here in Michigan. Can you um, characterize uh, your supporters? Yeah, I think I can. People that love our country more than anything else, and they like to see our country thrive. 
But do you think that when you hold rallies and encourage people to say, lock her up, the way you... I don't encourage them. They say it. And you Hillary enjoy Clinton, it. You don't say, don't, don't do Hillary that. Hillary Clinton deleted, she deleted 33,000 emails after she got a subpoena from the United States Congress. But why is this still an issue? Why do people, I think it's they're an not going to vote to on me that. it's an issue. She ran last time. Excuse me. When they say lock up, it's not me. They say it. It starts, it, you it ends up being it. a... I don't encourage it. Yes, you no. do. No, if I mention her name about something, they go crazy. Well, what about the governor of Michigan? Governor Gretchen Whitmer was the target of a kidnapping plot by an armed militia group. It was our Justice Department that is the one that's helping her. Yes. My Justice Department, if you call it that. The FBI. It was our Justice Department that's helping her. And, you know, people aren't so... They're not liking her so much because she's got everybody locked down. You got to get your governor to open up your state, okay? <laughs> Lock them. Lock them all up. You are very powerful, and the people who love you love you with passion. And if you go after somebody the way you've been going after her, they I take it to heart, her. and they then there no, are no. plots and threats, and the I same with Dr. Her. You did. I've helped her. It was you our did go Justice after her. Department you, you criticized that's helping her. her. Oh, I do criticize her. Yeah. Well, that's I think going the way after she locked her. down Michigan is a disgrace. But the way you... she closed churches in Michigan is a disgrace. I, yeah, I think it's disgraceful what she's done. I do. You want to lock and her then, by up? By the way, that's other. Of course, I don't want to lock her up. Why would I lock her up? Because you were in front of a rally of people saying it, encouraging it. Leslie, it's such a vicious thing you just said. I never said lock up the governor of Michigan. I would never say that. Do you take any responsibility for the country being divided against itself? Do you feel that? I'd like not to, but, you know, perhaps everybody has to take a little responsibility for it. But when people put out phony witch hunts, you know, when they spy on your campaign, you have to fight back. And if you don't fight back, you're not sitting here very long. You go back home. You go back home to mommy. The president's accusations against the Biden family, the abrupt end of our conversation, and Vice President Mike Pence's assessment of what happened when we return. As we moved from subject to subject, our conversation grew more tense. President Trump brought up what he calls the unfairness of the fake media, most prominently a lack of coverage of his unproven and unverified charges that former Vice President Joe Biden and his son Hunter have received millions of dollars in corrupt payments from a Russian oligarch and a Chinese billionaire. The story will continue in a moment. I wish you would interview Joe Biden like you interview me. It would be so good. You know what? You the, like this, the, I thought. I thought you liked it. I don't mind sparring. it. But when I watch him walk out of a store, and he's walking with a ice cream, and the question the media asks him, what kind of ice cream, what flavor <laughs> ice cream do you have? And he's in the midst of a scandal. He's not. And he's taking... He's of course not. he is, no. Leslie. Come on. Of course he is. It's the biggest, second biggest scandal. So, the biggest scandal was when they spied on my campaign. They spied on my well, campaign. There's Leslie. no real evidence of that. Of course there is. No. It's all over the place. Leslie, Sir, they spied on my campaign and they got I, caught. Can I say something? You know, this is 60 Minutes, and we can't put on things we can't no, verify. You won't put it on because it's bad for Biden. We can't Look, put on you. things we can't verify. Leslie, they spied and, on my campaign. Well, we can't verify It's been totally that. verified. No. It's been, just go down and get the papers. They spied on my campaign. They got caught. No. And then they went much further than that, and they got caught. And you will see that, Leslie, and you know that, but you just don't want to no. put it on the air. No, as a matter of fact, I don't know that. Okay. And you're out so there. So why don't you get back to your interview and let's go. Do you think that your tweets and your name calling are turning people off? No, I think I wouldn't be here if I didn't have social media. Well, but the media is fake. And frankly, if I didn't have social media, 
I'd have no way of getting out my voice. Do you know what you told me a long time ago when I asked why you keep saying fake yeah. media? Yeah. You said to me, I say that because I need to dis uh, discredit you so that when you say negative things about me, no one will believe you. I don't you. have to discredit you. But that's what you You've told me. You've discredited yourself. You know, I didn't want to have this kind of angry. Of course you did. No, I didn't. Of course you did. No, I didn't. Well, then you brought up a lot of subjects that well, I said were I'm inappropriately ask you brought tough up. Questions. They were inappropriately but brought up right from the beginning. No, your first question was, this is going to be tough questions. Why? You don't ask Joe Biden. I saw your interview with Joe, the interview with I Joe Biden. I never did a Joe it Biden interview. It was a joke. Interview. The interview, 60 Minutes. I see Joe Biden giving softball after softball. I've seen all of his interviews. He's never been asked a question that's hard. Okay, but forget him for a minute. No, but you your start with me. Your president, and Excuse me, Leslie, you started with me. Your first statement was, are you ready for tough questions? Are you? That's no way to talk. It's no way to talk. Leslie, one, one second. At this point, one of our producers interrupted to advise about the time remaining in the interview. I think we have enough of an interview here, Hope. Okay, that's enough. Let's go. Let's go. In uh, let's go meet for two seconds, okay? Thanks. I'll see you in a little while. Thanks. Be careful. We were scheduled to take a walk with the president around the White House grounds. I've got a lot of questions I didn't ask. While we waited to see if the president was coming back, Rich? his press secretary, Kaylee McEnany, came in with a hand delivery. Uh, Leslie, the president wanted me to deliver his health care plan. It's a little heavy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. This is his health care plan. Yes. OK, Kaylee, thank you. You're welcome, and uh, the vice president will be with you shortly. OK. And the president's not coming back? Uh, the president's giving you a, a lot of time. It was heavy, filled with executive this. orders, congressional I initiatives, but no comprehensive health plan. Hello, Leslie. Hi, Mr. Vice President. While our interview with the president did not go forward, the one scheduled with the vice president did. So what just happened with the president? Uh, Leslie, uh, President Trump is a man who speaks his mind. I think it's one of the great strengths that he's had. But he As president out. of the United States, is that the American people always know where they stand. I'll buy and that. And he's always ready. And the American people know that in this time, it's, it's, it's less about the back and forth with the media, and it's, it's really more about how we bring this country all the way back. We then asked the vice president to put on his hat so as the head of the White House Coronavirus the Task Force. Dr. Fauci, uh, you know the president said that he's a disaster, and he and the uh, other public health officials around him are idiots. Do you uh, care to comment on that? The scientists who've worked around the White House Coronavirus Task Force, who will meet again today here at the White House, uh, have provided a great public service. They so brought the idiots. perspective of scientists all along the way. And I have, a, I have a strong relationship with Dr. Fauci and Dr. Burks. But remember, the president of the United States has to consider the whole of America. The president's been balancing the broad interests of the country uh, and the health of the American people, and we'll continue to do that every day. So let's say there's a mother out there, let's say in a hot spot in Wisconsin, mm -hmm. and she's wondering whether she should send her children to school. Now, what's your advice? Leslie, we got to get our kids back in school. And I would say to that mother or any mother that we're going to continue to work our hearts out to make sure that those schools have the testing, have the PPE, have the supplies they need to get our kids back where they belong, safe and sound in the classroom. So are you saying she should send the kids back? Should the kids wear masks? I think they should adhere to whatever criteria the school administrators and local health officials determined to be appropriate. But really, again, I want to say the American Academy of Pediatricians made it clear early on that distance learning, this online learning, is no substitute for being in the classroom. What about Thanksgiving? Should people feel safe to get together with their family, with their grandparents, with their aunts and uncles? Thanksgiving is one of my favorite holidays. Me too. 
and, and I'm looking forward to it with our family. With a big, with extended? I think that's a decision every American family can make based on the circumstances in their community, the, the vulnerability of particular family members. You know, one of the things we apprehended early on is that seniors, particularly those with serious underlying health conditions, are the most at risk uh, for a serious outcome if they contract the coronavirus. And so well, families may make a decision that, that certain elderly family members might take a pass. But, but I think the difference between President Trump and me and, and some of the public voices in this debate over the last year has been we trust the American people. Nora O'Donnell talks with former Vice President Joe Biden and his running mate, Senator Kamala Harris, when we come back. <laughs> 